हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू बी फार्मा वाइज वी आर लर्निंग द टेक्निक्स फॉर प्यूरिफिकेशन एंड सेपरेशन ऑफ एनालाइट फ्रॉम द क्रूड मिक्सर वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट फिल्ट्रेशन वी हैव ऑल्सो डिस्कस्ड अबाउट क्रिस्टलाइजेशन एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट डिस्टिलेशन एंड फ्रैक्शनल डिस्टिलेशन सो कीप वॉचिंग Distillation is a method used for separation and purification of liquid samples, right? For solid samples, we generally go with crystallization. But what if the sample is liquid? Then we have to follow the distillation method. So let's discuss what is the assembly and how the process actually goes. See, in distillation, we will be taking a water bath. and in this water bath we will have a round bottom flask now in this round bottom flask we will take our mixture wherein our analyte and other liquid components are placed now i will put this uh, water bath on a proper stand or tripod and i will arrange a bunsen burner below this water bath so that i can heat this particular water bath and i can heat the contents placed in rbf now what i'll be doing is this rbf will be closed using a rubber cork and a thermometer will be placed inside this rubber cork like this this rbf will have a side arm here and we will make sure that the position of the mercury bulb of our thermometer is very close to the opening of that side arm this way we will be able to figure out the temperature of vapors passing through this side arm now i will attach this side arm to a condenser okay so this is how the condenser will look it will have this jacket outside jacket where water will be circulated and this inside tube will be there now this inside tube will be connected to a connector which will allow us to collect the contents coming from this tube in a receiver okay so we will have a receiver placed in here where we will collect the content which is coming out from this tube okay now as you can see this condenser it will have two openings one opening at the bottom and another opening at the top now this opening will be connected to a tap okay this will be connected to a tap so it will be called as inlet ha huh? it will be water inlet and this opening will be connected to a rubber tubing which will go in the drain sink so it will be called as outlet okay this is nothing but round bottom flask we have to use particular stand kind of thing to hold this rbf here in place okay and then this is the assembly this is how the assembly looks like okay this is the thermometer this is the thermometer in this assembly the basic thing which we need to take into consideration is the liquid we are filling in here this is your liquid mixture which you want to separate so it will have your analyte and it will have other components in liquid form now what we are going to do in distillation how we are going to use this process just understand our liquid component must be such that it should not decompose at its boiling point it should be able to boil at its boiling point without undergoing any thermal decomposition if the substance is like this we can go with the distillation now why we go for distillation for which kind of samples that you understand we can separate volatile sample from non volatile impurities or we can separate non volatile sample from non volatile impurities if there is sufficient difference in their boiling points so let's understand suppose this is my analyte and it is volatile and the other part of the mixture is non volatile in that case when you heat it 
until the boiling point of A, boiling at boiling point, the A will be vaporized to form vapors. Now these vapors will rise till here and the thermometer will detect the temperature of the vapors. If it is equal to the boiling point of A, then it's okay. Now these vapors as they have no any gaps to go or escape, they will travel down here in the side arm. Now as they start to travel in the side arm here, you can see we have attached a condenser. Now what is condenser? Condenser has an inert glass tube and it is encapsulated or covered with a jacket of glass where we are circulating water. From this inlet we are passing in the water, that water gets filled up in this entire condenser and then it is taken out okay so this entire tube of condenser is circulated by a jacket of cold water this allows the condenser to stay at a lower temperature than other parts of the assembly so as the temperature in this section is lower the vapors of a which are coming from here side arm when they start to pass from this condenser due to the lower temperature they start to condense and as they start to condense, as they move towards the end of the condenser, they are now forming the liquid droplets which are then collected in the vessel kept here which we call it as receiver. It is a very simple process wherein we are making use of the physical properties of the substance that at boiling point a particular substance boils and forms vapors and if we lower the temperature the vapors are condensing to give back the liquid now the liquid which you are getting in the receiver will be only of a no other impurity will be transferred to the receiver because we are keeping an eye on the temperature of vapors passing in the side arm. We are only collecting those vapors which are at a temperature of boiling point of our particular analyte. This way we are making sure that the liquid which we are collecting in the conical flask is of purest of quality. This is the simple distillation assembly. We can make use of this simple distillation assembly to, you know, uh, separate the components of mixture which are having sufficient difference in their boiling point. For example, I have acetone which has a boiling point of 56 degrees centigrade and then I have water which has a boiling point of 100 degrees centigrade. As you can see there is appreciable amount of difference between the boiling points of acetone and water. So suppose I have acetone and water here in the mixture and if I heat this particular uh, RBF to say 56 degrees centigrade, my acetone will be vaporized at 56 degrees centigrade, I will collect the vapors will be passed to the side arm then they will condense and in the receiver I will collect acetone as my first uh, component of the mixture. Then again I will repeat the entire process after a while and I will heat this at 100 degrees centigrade. I will make sure that the vapors passing to the side are at 100 degrees centigrade and then the second fraction which I will receive in the receiver 2 will be water. This is how if the particular components of mixture are well separated in their boiling points we can make use of simple distillation assembly to you know separate the components of mixture but what if I have to you know separate acetone with methanol or acetone from benzene now all of these have very um, colliding boiling points or their boiling points are very close together in that case what we will do so for such cases we should go with the fractional distillation assembly we will discuss how fractional distillation assembly works i am going to modify a little bit in this assembly and i'll show you what i'm going to do now look here this is my side arm
सो मै थर्मामीटर एंड साइड आर्म असेंबली विल बी एज इट इज वॉट आई विल डू दिस इज मै आर बी एफ नाउ दिस इज द वॉटर बाथ ऑइल और द ऑइल बाथ दिस इज मै स्टैंड दिस इज द बंसन बर्नर नाउ वॉट आई एम गोइंग टू डू इज आई बी अटैचिंग अ फ्रैक्शनेटिंग कॉलम इन बिटवीन आर बी एफ एंड दिस साइड आर्म सो आई विल नाउ अटैच अ फ्रैक्शनेटिंग कॉलम लाइक दिस ओके आई हैव अटैच दिस फ्रैक्शनेटिंग कॉलम एंड दिस फ्रैक्शनेटिंग कॉलम देर आर वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ फ्रैक्शनेटिंग कॉलम द वन विच आई एम यूजिंग इज पैक्ड कॉलम ओके और यू कैन मेक यूज ऑफ बबल ब्लेट कॉलम ऑल्सो द बेसिक पर्पज ऑफ फ्रैक्शनेटिंग कॉलम इज टू इंक्रीज द सर्फेस एरिया अवेलेबल इन बिटवीन सो दैट द वेपर्स विच आर राइजिंग अबाउ विल हैव टू पास थ्रू अ लॉट ऑफ डिस्टेंस एंड इन दैट डिस्टेंस वी कैन डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन द टू कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ द मिक्सर बिकॉज नाउ वी डोंट हैव द एडवांटेज ऑफ डिस्टिंक्ट बॉइलिंग पॉइंट्स बिटवीन द कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ मिक्सर सो वी हैव टू कम अप विथ सम thing which will allow us to differentiate between the components of two uh, mixture so this is our mixture where a is acetone and b is uh, you know benzene for example now the boiling point of acetone is 56 degrees centigrade and boiling point of benzene is around 80 degrees centigrade okay so there is not much difference between the boiling points of acetone and benzene so now what we will do now we will first heat this mixture to say 56 degree centigrade okay now what will happen at 56 degree centigrade a that is acetone will vaporize and the vapors of a will start rising they will reach to the fractionating column now they have to pass through a very large surface area to reach to the side arm okay so they will go on rising in the fractionating column meanwhile when the temperature rises towards 80 degree centigrade some of the b will start to form vapors so even below 80 some of the b will start to form vapors those vapors will also start rising now as they will go and pass through the fractionating column as they have to travel a lot of distance a long distance they will lose their heat in the meanwhile and they will start to condense and they will start to come back so this is the fate of vapors of b first they rise to the fractionating column but in the meantime they lost the heat and they start to condense now when they are coming back the newer vapors of b which are coming up they took the vapors down with them so this makes the process easier for a the vapors of a will go on and on and on and they will reach the side arm first okay so this is the use of fractionating column it allows the component of lower boiling point to reach the top of the fractionating column first and in the meanwhile it doesn't allow other component to reach at the top because in the meantime as the temperature is not at the boiling point of b the uh, b the vapors of b will condense and they will fall back and while they are falling back the descending liquid will scrub off the ascending vapors of b so in this process the fractionating column gets richer and richer in the vapors of a and so the vapors of a will reach the side arm first and then they will condense as we have seen in the simple uh, distillation assembly and they will be collected in receiver provided okay so in this receiver i'll first uh, contain my acetone liquid which is pure and separated from the benzene now as the acetone is completely separated in the receiver the rbf which you are having will only contain the another component which is benzene so this is how you can separate the mixture of components of a and b a will be collected in the receiver through the use of condensing assembly and b will be you know 
collected in the RBF itself. So this is how the fractional distillation works. We have seen how simple distillation and fractional distillation can help us separate non-volatile and volatile impurities, liquid components from each other or the liquid components which are non-volatile have sufficient difference in their boiling points using simple distillation and we can also separate the non-volatile liquid components with little difference in boiling points using fractional distillation. So using these techniques we are now able to separate and purify the components of mixture. So I hope you understood the process of simple distillation and fractional distillation. If yes tell me in the comments below that yes you understood and if this video is helpful do share this video with your friends and like the video and subscribe to be pharma wise keep watching my videos keep liking them keep sharing them and i'll meet you in the next video till then take care bye bye